What is going down, YouTube Town? It's your homeboy, Captain Retro, and we are here to check out the top 10 EM pinball machines of all time as of January 6th, 2021. I've made my list. I've checked it twice. We're going to find out who's naughty or nice. Here is number 10, Capersville. In mid-1966, the Bally Pinball Division was doing pretty poorly after two successful years. The huge success of Williams' A Go Go, released in May 1966, impressed Bally, and they asked art designer Jerry K. Kelly to do the art for their next four-player game. Ted Zale designed the game, one of the known 77 games that he designed for Bally. Capersville was produced for seven months, became the most successful flipper game ever for Bally, and held this position until 1973. JKK then went on to do artwork exclusively for Bally until he left the industry in 1969. Taken straight from some pen side reviews, this is a highly recommended game. It has multi-ball in two different ways, one comfortably feeding to your shooter, interesting rules, zipper flippers, unique scoring bonuses, etc. The artist has some fantastic work, but Capersville is not as cool as compared to some of his others. With a mystery theme, he really could have stretched it to the next level, but there's some cool stuff going on with it. Playing alone is great, but playing with people and stealing multi-balls will make you keep going over and over and over. From another review, I've been the unfortunate recipient of having to play this game in tournaments a few times, and I want to be clear about why I'm rating it the way I am. It seems there's a surge of love for this game right now. You're not going to get that from me. He goes on to say that the rules are confusing as crap. Even someone that owns the game failed to explain it to me in a way that was intuitive and approachable. Lock stealing? Really? The only reason why I'm even willing to give that a pass is because there's no possible way for an EM to handle that other than to kick out the balls during the end of ball sequence. So this guy doesn't like it, but most people do. It has two different types of multi-balls, a ball locking mechanic on the play field, the zipper flippers will close completely so you can the ball won't go between them. It's uh, very, very innovative for its time. I mean, it's basically doing solid state stuff back in 1966 with a four ball lock on the play field, a two and four ball multi-ball, um, multiple skill shot areas, the pop bumpers that change the uh, gates and let the ball in and out, the zipper flippers. I mean, this game really kind of has it all. Everything they could really do in a pinball machine back then that was attractive and fun, they, they added it to this game. Uh, the play field's a little bit strange. It's a, it's a submarine, and I think there's guys trying to break into it. They look like frogmen. It looks very similar to the Bally Sea Ray machine that I had for a while, and the, the art scheme is very similar. Uh, but check it out if you can find one. It's, uh, there was 5,000 some odd made, so there's gotta be a couple still around. Number nine on the list is Bally Dogies from 1967. The test samples had a green Dogies logo instead of the later known yellow one. It was a very successful game and ranked as the second best Bally production run until 1972. Designed again by Jerry Kelly and Ted Zale, there were 3,670 of these games produced. All of this is taken from different pin cider reviews. Another of Ted Zale's designs that gets little credit for the uniqueness of its design. It uses five color-coded mushroom bumpers to control the multiple in and out lanes on the game. I am proud to own this game in my collection, and after many years searching, it is a worthy contender to Nip It, 4 Million BC, Fireball, Bazaar, and Joust, among many others I own. It's one of the craziest and most unusual pinball games to come out of the 60s. The Pros, a truly creative layout by Master Zale and a surreal art package by the ingenious Gary Kelly. This game looks, sounds, and plays great. There are no playfield specials or extra balls, but wait, you can score extra games with scores and cactus juice. There's also a gate on the right to the shooter lane, so that's kind of a free ball too. Zipper flippers mean that you will always be adjusting your gameplay and aim, learn how to set up your shots with the mushroom bumpers, and then send the ball into the canyon. Great action in the pops. There's really not much in the way of descent on this game. Uh, most of the reviews, there was only a handful, and there's really barely any pictures available of it other than the couple videos that are on YouTube here. This one guy says, I owned it, I played it, then I sold it. Just not that fun of a game for me. I personally love a good cowboy theme myself, and uh, any game with zipper flippers has got to be worth trying out. They're, they're very unique, it's very cool, and when you do set off the zipper action, it makes you feel like a pimp. Uh, that being said, I've never actually played this game, but I hope to find one one day. Alright, on to number 8. Riverboat is a pinball machine from September 1964, manufactured by Williams Electronic Games, the first Williams on this list. It's designed by Norm Clark and artwork by Art Stenham. There were 1,650 produced. It is a one-player game with two flippers. 
Taken again directly from Pinside Reviews, after owning and playing this game for a year, it's all about geometry. This game is masterful in playing itself between the bumpers and slings. When I play this game, I feel like I can barely hit the ball with the flippers and it does its thing. Great pop bumper action. Trying to hit the jokers and swinging targets is what you're trying to hit when you get a chance. Trying to complete the card hands is exciting. Our first EM, so glad to have it. Another Pinsider says, Williams designed some very good games in the 60s and this is one of them. The artwork is as good as the card game theme play. A good looking play field, fun to play, great pop bumper action. The theme is a winner. It's just not a great game. I like it, but I don't love it. So. It's all over the map here on these. There's not a lot of reviews again. I've never seen one in the real world, but I always love a good casino or card theme machine. And I might as well let these guys take it away and give you their insight and thoughts on it. Uh, some, some older gentleman here who seems to be the king of bingo pinball, apparently. All right, so Mr. Bingo, Mr. Bingo here, Jeff Lawton is going to check out a rare reverse wedgehead game right here, Riverboat. Yeah, I know it's sacrilege for a bingo guy to play a flipper game, but this is a really nice old wedgehead, so I want to give it a shot. Well, what are you trying to do here? What's with the cards, you said? I think I'm supposed to try to get as many cards as I can get, and that'll light the special. And I can also, if I can turn the bumpers on, I get better score. And if I can make a little over 3,000 points, I can get a free game. So that's what I'm hoping for. Would you like this game corrected on how you get the special sled? How do you get it lit? The, the target and that upper special there, if you get three jokers on one ball, they okay. go out when the ball's over, though. If you get three jokers on one ball, those specials alternate. Oh, okay. Now, if you get the five through nine on the card sequence, yeah. that lights this out lane for special, and uh, the, ten, the ten through eight lights the other side. Okay. And if, okay. you get, if you get all ten of them, both sequences, at the end of the game, you get a bonus replay. I didn't know that. It's good. And there you have it from some dudes who would know. The game looks like it plays pretty fast. Awesome pop bumper setup. I can't wait to play one if I ever find one. Let's go to number seven. Released in July 1964, Heat Waves, a pinball machine manufactured by Williams Electronic Games. Designed by Steve Kordek with artwork by Art Stenham. There were 1,800 of these produced, and here are some of the reviews from Pinside. This one really surprised me. I was drawn in by the back glass animation and the cool look of the reverse wedge head. Properly tuned, the ball really flies on the lower play field. It's got a pretty difficult skill shot to hit all the rollovers up top, followed by five pop bumpers that change value as the thermometer climbs. Raising the thermometer gets harder the better you do as rollover lights go out and no longer raise the temp. I have a lot of games under my belt and getting the thermometer below your top is very hard let alone getting the center target special. This game has that one more game appeal. One of the top EMs, and it should be, Heat Waves Thermometer, repeated again in another great EM, is the immediate draw for everyone, then people start to play and understand the fun. Swinging targets add to the game as well as its wide open areas, simple reverse wedge head from Williams, clever artwork and good theme. I forgot, it makes an ironic appearance in John Carpenter's The Thing, should add extra points for that. But there are the downsides. This guy says, not William's best effort. The two swing targets are kinda cool, but the game lacks much other than that to shoot at. Cool artwork on the playfield, back glass is nothing great. Fun for a few games, maybe even a few weeks, but not a keeper. Heatwave's most prominent feature is probably its back box toy or mechanic, which is a thermometer that rises as the game is played and certain scoring achieved. Similar to Centigrade 37, the fact that it predates C37 by over a decade is a telling sign of what it achieved in an earlier era. Gameplay is progressively harder as the game goes forward, something less common with many early titles. Your goal is to raise the thermometer by hitting lit targets, which increases your overall bonus scoring shot value. What's great about the game design is as you raise the thermometer, less targets are lit with each level you achieve. Each time the thermometer raises to a new status, lights targets go out, making it harder and harder to reach the top and blow your top. A lot of games have repetitive designs, so hitting the same shot over and over makes scoring too easy. Heat Wave successfully takes that away as it makes sure you need to vary your shots a little to get where you want to go. As if that wasn't enough, the flipper area had to be unique too. Rather than a standard set of flippers with a gap, you're given the widely spaced flipper design with a center triangular posted playfield object. It doesn't score and doesn't sling, it's just there to redirect the ball. You can use it for shot angles, ball saves, or any number of things. Keeping that rubber fresh is important. 
It can be a nudger's dream or nightmare, depending on how you learn to use it. Number six is Gusher 1958, and the oldest game on our list by Williams Pinball, designed by Harry Williams and Harry Mabs, the man who invented the flipper. You get to the last ball, in addition to a special big all now, the gobble hole lights, and then the one, two, or three rotates. So depending what number is, writ is lit, when you get the gobble hole, you'll get that many free games. So you could get three free games, or you could get one. This will give us two. Came right up on it. On the last ball, another special lights. It's three. Five, this special light went on. So now, as an extra special, in addition to the gobble hole, if you get it down to shoot, you'll get a free game here. This game incorporates one pretty astonishing feature, a disappearing jet bumper. Uh, when If the bumper's up and you hit it, it spots a selected number and the skill shot raises the jet bumper so that the player can quickly complete one to 12 number sequence for replays, free games. Uh, then skill shot to top, side, or bottom transfers up bumper to disappearing jet bumper down, which opens a special lane. Uh, it's pretty cool. There's a disappearing bumper in the middle of the playfield. And, you know, for 1958, that's a lot. There are not a whole ton of reviews on this game over on Pinside. The artwork was done by George Mullington, and here are some ratings comments. One of the most beautiful back glasses of all time, a very colorful playfield only adds to the beauty. The disappearing pop bumper is a very cool feature. Trying to hit it without advancing the selected number is tricky. The gobble hole in the middle is dangerous before all the lights are lit and then tantalizing once the specials are lit. Almost all targets are reachable with the flippers, making it easy to get tantalizingly close to lighting up all the numbers, 1 through 12, and it keeps you coming back for more. A real winner. Somebody else says, such a great game. I wish there were more of them out there for people to enjoy. The disappearing bumper always keeps me wanting one more game, and the artwork is awesome. A real piece of history. The last person said, I work in the oil field, so main reason I bought and like the game. They gave it a 7.1, and those were their reasons. Uh, so not a whole lot known about it. It looks pretty neat. I've never seen one in life. I've never played one. It is the only wood rail, I believe, on the list. Uh, it is hands down the oldest game on the list, and uh, I'd love to get a chance to lay my hands on this old wooden bad boy. Number five is Hurdy Gurdy by Gottlieb from 1966, the first Gottlieb to make the list. Hurdy Gurdy is the Attaball version of Central Park. Uh, the Italian export version is identical except for a different apron and back glass. It's unknown how many were made. It's a one-player game with two flippers designed by Ed Krinsky and Art Stenholm and Roy Parker. The cool thing about this game is there is a monkey that rings a bell in the back glass. Same thing with Central Park. Here's some rating comments on the game from Pinside. I gave Hurdy Gurdy three tens and here's why. The back glass art is absolutely beautiful and captures that Coney Island Long Beach Pike Boardwalk vibe. The play field art is stunning. I absolutely dig the overall detail and artwork on Hurdy Gurdy. The mechanical monkey on the back glass banging on the five inch belt is amazing to watch giving that carnival feel. The play field is awesome, requiring both patience and skill. With the small flippers positioned around two center lanes and three bumpers, the game is addicting to play. It is my most favorite game to play ever and is well balanced with targets in just the right spots. And with the add -a ball feature, it is the icing on the cake. Another user said, The short flippered split layout at the bottom is a bit of a throwback and may be off-putting to some, but Hurdy Gurdy is among the better designed iterations of this style despite the frustration you'll have with the house balls. It rewards carom shots to send back balls to the upper playfield. A center skill shot to light the green or yellow bumpers is essential to racking up a high score ball. You have to take the calculator risk sometimes of hitting the lit center box post in the lower playfield. As an add-a-ball with up to 10 balls, it allows for a comeback with a good ball. And what the hell, there's a monkey ringing the bell with a hammer in the back box. Are you not entertained? I have played a good bit of Central Park, uh, the four-player version myself. Uh, maybe it's a four-player version. It might be just be a two-player version. I'm not sure. I have it on one of my PS2 video games and possibly on my PS4 as well in uh, virtual form. Uh, never actually played a real one. Seen them a few times, just never walked over and touched one. But uh, maybe I should give it a shot. The double, the double outlane in the middle is kind of neat. 
and the monkey banging on the bell is definitely a sight to behold. Coming in at number four, Teacher's Pet from December 1965 by Williams Electronic Games, designed by Steve Kordek. Uh, that's all the information I can find. I don't know who did the artwork on it. There were 1,600 of them produced. There's not a whole lot of ratings, but there's some really great ratings comments for this game. And we're going to start off with those. I was recently reunited with this game after foolishly letting my first one go. Just as frustratingly fun as I remembered. As mentioned in another rating, to do really well, you need to collect the T and E early on. If you haven't by ball two, you feel the pressure mounting. Making it back up to the top is doable, but challenging. Part of what makes it so fun, I think, the top rollover is worth 500 points, but not as easy as you'd think to collect. It takes a very skilled plunger shot, and then when it's up top, you are sort of faced with the dilemma of trying to collect the T and E kickouts first, as they are so crucial. This game really polishes your nudging skills. This game really polishes your nudging skills as you try to influence the ball's subtle trajectory to get all the letters needed. By ball four, the game helps you a little bit by allowing you to collect the lower letters via the switches behind the drop targets. What's interesting is that sometimes you want the drops up and sometimes you need them down. You can manipulate that, but it isn't easy. After all the letters are collected, the special is lit. You need to shoot the two drop targets to collect it, so it's crucial to get them back up. Lots to do to complete the tasks needed to win a replay through collecting all the letters. Playing for score may be a bit easier, but not as satisfying. It's a great game that keeps me coming back for more. Somebody else wrote, It's bright and colorful and loaded with goodies in the playfield. I really wanted to like this game more than I did. The playfield has a fundamental issue that it is so cluttered, it is almost impossible to get the ball up to the top. That becomes an issue since the most important scoring features are at the top. To build the drop value, you have to collect pairs of holes, stand-ups, but good luck shooting for the first two sets at the top. Your best bet is to hope for a good plunge and get them. But that's another issue. A skillful soft plunge will get you 500 points at the center lane rollover. Five balls, five skillful plunges, and you can get 2,500 points without flipping, which is a higher score than a typical game where you miss the skill shot. If there was a clear path to shoot to the top, this game would rank a lot better. But as it sits, it's still a bunch of fun and a great value for the price it commands. Number three on the list is Blast Off, or Apollo, or Lunar Shot. Blast Off was one of three nearly identical games produced by Williams in 1967 to capitalize off the prominence of the NASA Lunar Program. Taken as a group, these three pinball machines are among the most popular and best-selling games of the decade. Apollo was the replay version, Blast Off was the add -a ball version, and Lunar Shot was a version of the with the add -a ball with modifications to the back glass to confirm Italy's strict anti-gambling laws. Designed by Norm Clark and the artwork by Art Stenholm, there were 4,635 produced. I have actually owned an Apollo version of the game, and it is super rad. We may have uh, desecrated its body because it was so disgusting and nasty that I repainted it completely and completely changed the artwork on the body, but we left the back glass in the playfield alone, and I sold it for a hefty little profit. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. What's important is how fun this game was. Uh, there are 10 lights in the middle of the playfield, rollover targets that you have to light sequentially to shoot the rocket off into space. And when you do that, the rocket on the back glass shoots a little ball out and it falls through a pachinko type system to rack up points for your bonus. It's a very, very fun game, a very fast playing EM machine. And let's go ahead and read some comments. Pinsider Old Baby says, I can't in good conscience give this game less than a 6 out of 6 in any category. If I were to penalize it for something, it would be the small flippers, but that seems unfair. For my part, I choose to judge games based on the standards of the time, mostly. I like modern flippers, code, and art, but compared to other games of this era, I think this game is just about as good as it gets. The pros, the art package, orbits on an EM, hitting the ball straight up the center and getting a bunch of rollovers and then the stand up in the back is a great pinball moment. Bagatelle board in the back just for fun, so I ask, what's not to like? He gave zero cons. Caucasian Two Step says, It's one of the finest EM games ever created. The pros, great shots to shoot at. The 1 through 10 targets in the playfield require at least 3 shots of the playfield to light them all, unless you get them in one big swoop. Great action in the pops, and the orbits are placed perfectly. Alternating lights on the orbits keep your shots up in the air. The bagatelle is implemented incredibly well into play. Art Stenum laid down a brilliant art package, one of the best ever to be seen on a pinball game. Add a ball is always a challenge to your skills. The cons, the only thing that would make this table better are in lanes. The bagatelle can make the difference between a good and great scoring game. You can't really nudge it to add skill to what you get for points. I don't own one. That's his con. The takeaway, I will have one in my collection someday, one of Norm Clark's best. 
I agree. This game is fantastic. I'm kind of sad I sold it, but luckily it went to one of my dad's buddies and it's uh, in a place where I'm accessible to it. And uh, when he uh, goes to the great beyond, I'm going to do my best to get it back from him because it is a, it's a one of a kind artwork that we did to it. And if you want to see that, go uh, look around on my channel here and find that video. It's pretty neat looking. Number two is the youngest EM game on the list from September 1970 by Bally. It's Trail Drive, designed by Ted Zale and artwork by Christian Marsh. There was 1,305 produced. Not a whole lot of reviews that uh, actually, you know, have comments with them. I'm gonna read every one there is here. Nice theme for those that like Western pins. The gameplay lacks, especially for the price. Hmm, Datitude seems to have a problem with the price. Deer Lakes 6 says, I just picked this up because I fell in love with it playing it at Allentown PA Show. Great back box animation, great artwork, and a blast to play. The theme is great, it's a keeper, and quite rare. Skeeb Wilcox says, as you can tell by my rating, one of the worst. He gave it a 2.6, and four pinsiders have flagged that rating. Bondo59 says, I too played when I was young. Hard machine to find. If you see one, play it. A 7.8. And Scooter, the last one to write something, gave it a 9.12 and said, I played this game a lot as a kid. One of my favorite at the time with the back box animation, Shoot the Cat. Okay, so this game has got some stuff going on with it. It's got a back box animation, which uh, is not uncommon for pinball machines from the era, but by the early 70s, it was. It was going out of style, I guess, or it was just too much to incorporate those things into modern games. There's not a whole lot of modern games with a back glass animation. Anything post-1975, let's say. I love the bull feature on the playfield with the lights in his horns. Looks like there's a few mushroom bumpers, three pop bumpers, a couple different lanes, that little ball lock on the sling side over there. There's all kind of stuff going on in this game, and it looks like it plays fast and furious with big three-inch flippers. So Bally knew what they were doing. Bally, uh, a lot of people call Gottlieb the king of the EMs. I, I, I think Bally might be the king of the EMs. Most of their games are innovative and dope and play fast. That's the key to a non-boring pinball game is speed, I think. Uh, give me shots, give me things to hit, but also don't let the ball just slowly bound around the game. Let it come at me with some ferocity. And this game looks like it has it. Look at that bull, that bull is intimidating. The number one game on the list is Lady Luck from 1968, manufactured by Williams Electronic Games, designed by Norm Clark with artwork by Luis Reynaud. There were 3,202 produced, and uh, it's basically, you're playing 21, you're, you're playing blackjack against a dealer. I, there's not a lot of uh, information about the game online. There are 10 ratings comments, and let's read some of the cool ones. William's Lady Luck Pinball Machine plays just like the card game Blackjack. The double digit score reels are the player's blackjack points in his hand, just like if he was playing a blackjack card game in a casino. The dealer's hand comes up on the back glass after each ball is played in the lower right corner. Usually the dealer has 17, 18, 19, or 20. Or the dealer can bust, giving the player a free ball even if the player has also busted. This is one of my favorite Williams 1960s EM games. There are many other great Williams games, but just the idea of playing blackjack on a pinball machine is really cool. Plus it's a fun game to play with lots of action. You need to pay attention to what's happening to beat it. 21, bust? This game is the closest you'll get to playing blackjack against a pinball machine. Great fun, really interesting concept of playing for points but also trying to beat the dealer. Played it once in Holland and liked it immediately. Marsh and his pointy people never has done it for me. Ooh, that guy doesn't like the pointy people artwork. Pointy people is a, is a, it's a love or hate thing apparently. Insider Pinball Pete from SD says, at first glance, this game looks like it has nothing going on for it. Then you learn the rules and they change everything. The mechanics of how this game work are insane. The schematics are twice as long as a four player game from the late 70s. It's engineering at its finest. I'm not a huge EM guy, but I love a good game. I love a good target EM and cranking some spinners ain't so bad. But this game is different in a way I did not think was possible with 68 tech. It's downright amazing. Someone below explained the rules very well, so I will not bore you with it again. Set this up for conservative and try to beat the dealer. It's so addictive. Hands down the best blackjack game ever. I'm about to own one, so this review will change after six months. He gave it an 8.99 then, that was a year ago. He has not come back to review it again. We'll see later on if he does. I have never played it. These gentlemen have though. I'm gonna let them explain it to you and you can watch their video while they go through the game. Hey guys, this is Mickey from CoinOpNewYork.com 
and we are at the Pinball Wizards Convention in, Pinball, in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. And we're checking out a game here that i was been playing, which I think is really cool. 1968 Williams Lady Luck. And I got uh, the owner here, Len, from Pittsburgh. And he's going to describe how the game works. Yes, Mickey, this is 1968 Lady Luck. Uh, this is a unique two-player game. And uh, the name of the game really Lady Luck, but you're really playing blackjack. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to beat the dealer. The dealer's okay. card score will appear. Uh, dealer's card playing. after you've gotten your hand That's right. up here. That would be your player score. You right. get that score by hitting the advanced units here, and it randomly it, it, it steps up your card unit. And this is the card score you get when you're drained. All right. So, so let's say we're on card five here. Right. And we put the ball in here. The joker right. lay is lit. Then you it's get. Gonna, it's going to give me five more points. Yeah. You there. get twenty-one. All right. But here's the unique part about this game. You have to drain your ball to get your extra ball, 300 points, and a replay. Right. If you get 22, you're going to have a player right. bust. And then right yeah, up there, that light of light will say player, player, player bust. bust when you go over 21. So when you, let's say you shoot the ball on the play field, and it comes down right here, that's a queen. That'll give you 10 points there. If you come down here, that's a king. That'll give you 10 points. Every time you hit the center target, it's a point. Okay, to advance the card, right, Len? That's we, exactly right. We hit these advances. The, the cards move along here. That's so right. it's a very good, much a strategy game. That's right. Now, the other thing, you get both jokers, okay. you open up the gate. Okay, there's a, get there's a little gate here that opens That's up. Right. So if this is lit, it says joker, and you go in, and this is lit, and it says joker, you go in, this gate's going to open That's up. That's exactly All right. right. Uh, here's the other, one last thing about this game. If you tie the dealer, you get 300 points and you get another ball. So it never hurts to drain if you're going to beat the dealer because you'll get a ball. Okay. So if you tie the dealer. You tie the dealer as well. That's correct. Okay. So if you got 19 up there. That's right. And then the score flash is 19. 19. You would get you get a extra ball as well as 300 okay. points. Okay. All right. Let's fire it up and play it. Let's see right, how let's you see play. How we do let's it. see how you do. Score is resetting. Okay. Score goes to okay. zero. All right. 10. Now he's going to get 10 points. See? Oh, there almost at 20. All right. Okay. We're down here at six. He's got seven spotted on the uh, on the uh, on the center there. See the seven lit up. Advanced. Now we got eighteen. Okay. I could drain now. I get no, you don't have. Okay. Oh, now I got. No, it's only at eleven. I'm at eleven now. Oh, and I lose it. And I got twelve, so I don't okay. even come close to where, winning in black. Where did you say you had eighteen? I didn't get that. I would have had eighteen right here. We're at eighteen. Oh, okay. If I would have okay. gotten in here and drained right. out at eighteen. We had an eight up there, so if we could have yeah. got it in there, that's when we would have got eighteen. Exactly. So, all right, so then at flash 20, nine moves. He didn't bust, but he yeah. didn't win. Yeah. I'd like to take this time to thank you all for so much for sitting around for 27 some odd minutes and watching this entire episode of the 10 best EM games of all time. Of the top 10 EM pinballs of all time as of January 6th, 2021. There's going to be a list. Uh, every couple months, I'll update this thing if it changes that often. You know what I mean? I, I think it does. Back in December, I was looking, and there was two more that were on the list that are no longer on the list. And, uh, you know, it's that fast. So I went ahead and updated my list when I made this list. And that's enough of saying the word list. You guys, come on back. Comment down below. Subscribe, like, all that nonsense. Say hey to Captain Retro. Captain Retro will say hey back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Hooray! Yeah, Captain Retro, Captain Retro, Captain Retro.